Hello, my name is Nikki and I live in South Jordan, Utah in the United States of America. I am so excited to be here with you today. Let's start with a big question. Are you ready to change the world? I can't hear you. Are you ready to change the world? Oh, that's so much better. But wait, I think I heard someone say, I'm just a kid. How can I change the world? Well, my friends, I'm excited to show you and everyone else how even as kids, you have the power to change the world. Let's watch a fun video that's all about shoes. What kind of shoes will you see? Okay, I think I can guess what your morning is like. It takes a while to wake up. Eventually, you get out of bed and get dressed. Maybe you forget to eat breakfast. Hopefully you remember. But before you go out the door, we all do something very important. All important, but not quite what I'm thinking. That's right, before we go anywhere, we all put on our shoes. Of course, everyone's shoes are different. Have you ever thought what it would be like to walk in someone else's shoes? If you put on a pair of cowboy boots, could you imagine riding horses and herding cows? I wonder if cowboys get lonely out there. Could you imagine yourself in sports shoes, being a great basketball player? I wonder if they feel anxious when they play a really important game. What about high heels? Could you imagine yourself as a movie star in front of millions of people, getting a special award? Do you think you might be scared up there? in front of everybody. So when someone says you should try walking in someone else's shoes, that means you try to understand what it would be like to be that person, especially how they might feel inside. Can you imagine what it might be like to walk in these shoes? These shoes are different than all the other shoes we tried on. But what if they were the secret to an amazing adventure? Would you try them on? Wow, we saw a lot of shoes. I saw some cowboy boots, and there was a nice pair of high heels, and even a pair of tennis shoes. But what about those last pair of shoes? They were pretty dirty, and there were holes in the bottom of those. I know it may surprise you, but what if I told you that walking in those shoes could help you to change the world? Would you do it? If you understood why this boy was wearing these shoes, you could pretend to be him so you could feel what he feels and even imagine what he has to do every day. If you did that, most kids would want to help him instead of teasing or looking down on him. So what do you think? Would you want to help him? Here is what is amazing, my friends. The moment you decide to help him, you begin to change the world for the better. I'm wondering, how does helping other people make you feel? That's right, you feel wonderful. I know, I sure feel incredible when I help someone else. There's a really fun word for this. It's called empathy. Empathy is such a cool word, I want to say it together. Let's try it really slow. Empathy. That was great. Now, on the count of three, let's say it as loud as we can. Are you ready? One, two, three. Empathy! Oh, wow, that was so great. Now, can we whisper it like a secret? Empathy. Wow, that was so quiet. I hardly heard you say it. So earlier, we said that even kids like you can change the world. Do you know how they can do it? I think you have it. Being kind to everyone, no matter what they look like or dress like, or even sound like. Who's ready to take an amazing adventure with me? Do you remember that boy who was wearing the shoes with the holes in it? 
How about we go pay him a visit? His name is Thomas and he lives 9,000 miles away. You'll need to pack your suitcase. We'll have to go by plane. It will take about 24 hours. <laughs> It's time to meet some new friends who live in Africa. This is Thomas and his sister Juliet. Can you say hi to them? Thomas is holding what is called a jerry can. Raise your hand if you know what's inside. I see Levi raising his hand. That's right, there's water inside. Let's see what it would be like to walk in their shoes. Every day, Thomas and Juliet go on an adventure to find water to fill their containers. They'll need to avoid snakes, and not the friendly kind like my pet Zola here. They have to climb hills, they have to cross wide ditches, and they have to walk for hours and hours every day. So often, there's no time to go to school. Oh, and did I mention they have to watch out for crocodiles. How many of you had to watch out for a crocodile the last time you went to get a drink? I don't think so. Your water comes from the faucet or a drinking fountain or out of a nice cold bottle from the refrigerator. But Thomas and Juliet don't have any of those things. Think about this for just a minute. There's no faucets, no refrigerators, no water fountains. Can you imagine if you had to collect all the water you use every day from a long way away? What if you wanted to take a shower? How many yellow cans do you think you would need for one shower? That's right, four. Could you imagine walking that trail at least four times? over two miles just to get enough water for one shower? What about washing your clothes or cooking or even having a drink? Holy smokes, we're gonna need a lot of water. To see what it's like to walk in Thomas and Juliet's shoes, we'll need to travel to their village. This is the road that we'll take. This is where Thomas and Juliet live. It's their house. Do you see those yellow cans? Here's their sister. She's cooking in the kitchen. Does this look like your kitchen? She'll need water for cooking and also for drinking. How much water do you think the average person uses every day in America? We use about 100 gallons or 20 jerry cans. What are we gonna do? We're gonna need more people to help us get water. Let's walk in their shoes and find out where they're getting their water. Remember that each child will have to walk at least two to three miles to get their own water and enough to share. This is gonna be a long walk. I might wanna change my shirt. Could you imagine drinking water like this? How thirsty would you have to be before you would drink this water? This water comes from the same places that creatures are living, animals are standing, and where people are bathing. Yuck! This water will make a lot of people really sick. Who thinks it's not fair that other kids just like you have to drink this water just because of where they live? This water has bugs and fecal matter in it. I'm talking elephant poop. Would you want to drink this every day? No thanks. I'm starting to feel hungry. Wow, my stomach is growling. Let's borrow some of Thomas and Juliet's water and make something to eat. Ramen noodles don't take very long and they taste so delicious. How about if we make some? Wow, wow, this doesn't even smell good. Who would want to eat this? I don't think Thomas wants to eat it either, but you know what? He has no choice if there's no clean water to cook with. Your body can only go without food for about one month. 
but we can only live without water for about four days. By the fourth day, you're probably not here anymore. Let's play a short game. It only takes a minute. Close your eyes. Imagine that you lived with Thomas in the village next door and you walked with Thomas to get dirty water. You put your shoes on that have the holes in them. Can you see yourself putting on those dirty shoes? Now picture yourself walking a long time, carrying those jerry cans up and down the hills, avoiding those wild, scary animals. Imagine you arrived at the dirty water hole where you fill your cans with the water. Remember what that water looked like? What color was it? Do you remember those frogs and bugs and stuff? Let's imagine you had to carry all that water back on top of your head without dropping it. It weighs about 40 pounds or about the size of your five-year-old brother. Wow, okay. Now go ahead, open your eyes. What an adventure we just had. If you lived in the same place as Thomas and had to make that long walk every day, would you hope that someone would help you get clean water right in your village? They would be practicing empathy. Remember that cool word, just like we talked about earlier? We would feel amazing, they would feel amazing, and it would be so great. Shout out yes if you would like to help Thomas, his family, and all of his village get good, clean drinking water. Let's hear ya. Yes! Wow, that was incredible. That was a lot of yeses. In the beginning of this video, we said that you could change the world. How would Thomas's world change with clean water? First, he could go to school instead of walking all day to fetch dirty water. Second, he would have time to play with his friends. And third, he wouldn't have to go to the hospital because of sickness from dirty water. Think about his sister Julia and the rest of the family. In fact, think about the kids in the entire village and also the villages that are next to theirs. What if we were able to get clean water for everybody? Wow, that's mind-blowing! Does everyone know what a well is? A well is a hole in the ground where we can send down a pump and we can pump up nice, clean, clear water. This is a full day of children at an orphanage in Uganda getting clean water until the sun goes down. Can you see how busy the well is? They really need the clean water. If Thomas had a well close to his home, this is what it would be like for him, his family, and his neighbors. It would be like having a drinking fountain just down the road. How cool would that be for Thomas? Getting people clean water in some parts of the world is really hard. If it was easy, then everyone would already have clean water, right? Since most people live on footpaths, we can't use a big drilling truck. We'll need a machine that we can carry to the people or that we can put in a canoe and that can dig a hole down into the ground to find clean water that's already there in an the aquifer. Great news, my friends. Through some inspiration and some very hard work, we now have a machine that can do just that. It was one person's idea that was brought to life by university students. The machine is called the Village Drill. The university students used what they learned in STEM classes to build the drill. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. How cool would it be to grow up and invent something that will save a whole bunch of people and make their lives so much better? What do you think about this boy and what he was able to create? I can't help but wonder if he would make a great engineer. Do you think he would have the opportunity to go to the university? Probably not. But things could really start to change if he had clean water. So now that we have the village drill, we can go help Thomas, his sister, and his family get clean water. Let's take a look and see what it would take to get Thomas water for his entire life. A village drill well only costs about $5,000 to build. 
We know that up to 1,000 people will live close enough to use that well. So that's how we know just $5 will give someone water for life. Wow, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? Such a small amount can have such a great big impact. So we learned a lot about empathy today. And one thing we discovered is that empathy should promote positive actions. In other words, if you see someone who needs help, let's try to help them the best way we can. We also learned that first, Thomas and his entire village needs clean water. Second, we have a tool, the village drill, that can drill them a well to reach the clean water in the ground. And third, it costs about $5,000 to put a well in a village or about $5 a person for a lifetime of water. So what can you do as a kid to help Thomas get clean water? Would you be willing to go without something or do some small chore or job to help Thomas get clean water? For example, would you be willing to go without popcorn at the movies that costs about $5 just one time and then have an adult forward that $5 to Thomas's village for you? So think about it for just a second. You go without popcorn just one time and a person clear on the other side of the world gets clean water for the rest of their life. Would you make that trade? Let's see how three kids found small creative ways to help Thomas and his friends get clean water. Mom, can you buy me a candy bar? I could, but what if we put that money towards getting your friends in Africa some clean water? Oh, that's right. Let's do that. Hey, Shauna. I signed you up for the Well Done Team. So, what would you like to do to help someone get clean water every month? Well, every Saturday, we go to the drive-thru after the game. If I get water and don't order a soda, can that money we save go towards clean water? Absolutely. That's a great idea. Way to go, Shauna. What a great way to help someone else. So, Bobby, I signed you up for the Well Done Team. What do you think you want to do to help your friends get clean water? We always cook a big dinner on Sundays. If I help cook dinner or clean the house up before people come over, could we trade that work to help someone in Africa get clean water? Wow, that would be really wonderful. I'd love the help. That'd be a great way to pay it forward. So what do you think, friends? Are you ready to put empathy into action? Do you remember closing your eyes and imagining walking with Thomas in those dirty shoes, carrying that heavy bucket to get dirty water? Together, we could be an amazing team. Together, we can change the world. Before I say goodbye, I wanna share a little video. This is a special message from Dejana a Miss America contestant that traveled with us to Uganda. She wanted to show you how it would feel to give a community a clean water well. Let's see how happy they are now that they have clean water. We are here in Pomede Toro, setting up one of the village drills. The work is going great, and we're so excited to be able to bring clean water to the villagers here. All of the children are lined up and so just my heart is yearning for them, that they are so happy to finally have clean water, something we never think about in the States. And so it's a really humbling experience and I'm very, very grateful to be a part of it. I'm Margaret Bogere from Tororo, Uganda. And my village is Pomede. I'm very excited. Today is for me, it's like a Christmas. I'm overwhelmed. Thank you very much. May God bless you. No more going to the swamp for water. <laughs> They're all here to see fresh, clean water. Thank you, Margaret. We love you. Thank you very much. Thank you for visiting me today and letting me introduce you to our friends Thomas and Juliet. You may never get to meet them in person, but they will never forget that someone cared about them.